William, welcome to the show. How can we help you? Hello. Can you hear me? We can indeed. Hello. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, the omniscience paradox and how free will seems to be unreconcilable with the idea of a omniscient God, and specifically my own formulation of that argument, because I argue that since a God is omniscient, and since it, he must be logically consistent with himself in order for the idea to maintain any sense of salability, that it would be impossible for God not to conceive of a completely deterministic universe. Like, every, if God were to think of a universe, he could not conceive of a universe in which it was not completely deterministic. And thus, free will is eliminated. That seems very logical to me. I mean, are you actually an atheist? Or? Um, no, I'm an atheist. Okay, yeah, I mean, that, that's more or less the, the issue that I would have, that you get frequently um, theists will come along and they'll say, but if the universe is deterministic, that, you know, you don't really have any control over your thoughts and whatever, um, which, which may or may not be true. But the thing is that they live in exactly the same universe. Yeah, the, the, there is there only there is only one question: Is the universe deterministic or not? Um, if you look at it from the Christian perspective, when you think about that, that God knows every sparrow that falls. He knows all things that will happen. Everything is prophesied. He knows the future. The only way he could know that is if he's seen this movie before. And the and thing that, that really bugs me, this is one of the ones that really bugs me, of the biggest plot holes that you get in this thing, right? Apparently the devil's going to come back at the end or something. Yeah. And it's like, has the devil not got to the end of the Bible? Has he not read the spoilers at the end? I mean, is he really <laughs> expected to come back and get his before, ass whopped Before we something? move too far down that route, I just want to, because um, when we used to have uh, Don Exodus on the show in the early days... Oh, we missed Don Exodus. We ought to see if we can get him back for a show. Yeah, I mentioned um, he, twice he actually today. addressed this point, and he, he, I know that he disagrees, and he does think that it, or his view is that it is not incompatible for, the, uh, for God to know everything and for us to still have free will. And he did address it uh, specifically in response to a question I um, uh, gave to him on one show, and I can't remember exactly how he put it, um, I think it was along the lines of, yes, we have free will, but God knows which decision you're going to make, which I thought was a little bit implausible, but um, any comments on that? Yeah. I'll, so you can, I'll, concordance. Sorry. Concordance you is can, being quiet. I think you can have free will in a deterministic universe. You have the free will to make the choice that is presented to you, right? You have the free will to make the choice that you make. The problem is if there were a divine being who was quote unquote with a, I got to stop saying that, who is outside of time, then there, there could be no causation. There's no, there's no even idea of a non-deterministic possibility. And I think that's what uh, William here is saying, is that if you have already seen the outcome of the action, and every possible outcome of the action, then it is determined from the point of view of someone outside of time. And that is just by definition. There's no way to suspend that except to willfully not know uh, what the next step is, which is essentially to negate your own omnipotence. So the only way that in, uh, that a, a universe can be non-deterministic if is is if um, uh, the divine being is uh, not omnipotent or chooses to suspend his omnipotence. Also, it, it, it's one of these crazy things that you know, supposedly the whole purpose of creating this universe was to give people the free choice of whether they would worship you or not. Um, now, if you go for this, God is outside of time, well, um, okay, so what he really did was he created some people who would love him and some people who didn't love him, but he's outside of time, so he already knows what all of the outcomes are going to be. So what the hell was the point of that? And the second thing is, if you're really that powerful that you can create the whole universe and everything like that, um, 
wouldn't it get really boring really quickly just to have people worshipping you? How long would, I mean, it, let's just say, for instance, that you could be God for, um, you know, a day. How long would it take to get, re- how long would it take to get really, really boring with just having people worshipping you all the time? Well, he's a bit of a narcissist. But just going back to your previous point. It would point, be boring. Yeah, I mean, I know, it would be boring not for, for a narcissist. me. I'm, I'm not that omnipotent, you know. Um, just going back and to I'm your previous point. And I'm a little bit of a narcissist. Second, and it, and it would be boring to me. One second, if I may. Just going back to your previous point about whether God can foresee everything. You, you don't have to go further than the, what, the third chapter of Genesis before you realize that he clearly didn't foresee everything. Well, at least Otherwise, by the sixth we chapter. were just an experiment. He put us in the garden, he put the serpent there, he put the tree there, and he just let the ball roll to see what was going to happen. So what was the case when he got pissed off that uh, Eve ate uh, the fruit? Did he not foresee that coming? So in that case, he's not manipulant. Or if he did see it coming, then he's a fucking, mis- sorry, he's a brutal, horrible monster. Yeah, and then you got to remember also, because he, he laid out what was going to happen if that happened, what were what were the, the the consequences going to be, and then when that happened, those were not the consequences. He laid out a completely different set of consequences, basically through a childish tirade, laying out the brand came new out consequences. Of the right. But beforehand, all he said is, "If you eat of the tree, that you will surely die." Afterwards, he made Eve suffer in childbirth, and every woman that's come afterwards, Adam had to toil the earth, and the serpent had to crawl around on its belly. Yeah. <laughs> and eat dirt. And eat dirt. <laughs> Which, of course, they don't do. <laughs> William. Well, what do you want from a bunch of ignorant sheep shaggers? Um, I want to show, Aaron. William. I wanted also to um, make a separate point that I kind of thought up, which I found kind of funny. That um, using the same train of logic, if it is only possible for a god to conceive of a deterministic universe, then it's only possible for a god to create a deterministic universe. He has no other choice. And then I say that um, the building blocks of physics are essentially non-deterministic. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle, quantum indeterminacy, so on and so forth. So either our entire knowledge of physics is wrong, or an omnipotent being did not create this universe. Do you think there's an argument that maybe we just simply don't understand quantum mechanics yet and there may be some underlying law and uh, a theory behind it that would actually explain it? Um, it's, it's always possible. I mean, our own knowledge of these things is quite limited, but, I mean, in the scale of um, predictability and stuff, uh, quantum mechanics has had some spectacular results compared to the other fields of science and the scale and precision in which the predictions have been made. So it's it's one of the more accurate sciences which we have. Concordance. I was just going to tell you that's an Eric Hoven question. Is it possible that everything we know is wrong? Uh, yes, of course, no. it's, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by the way, I've come out with the uh, ultimate answer to that. Um, uh, they did that apologetics thing, and it's that I too can have your level of certainty if I inherit your level of dishonesty. <laughs> well, no, I've got another. I've got another answer, which I think is even better. No, it is not possible that everything that I know is wrong. Neither is it possible that anything you know is right. (laughs) (laughs) William, thank you very much indeed for the call. Uh, I've got two people I'm desperately trying to squeeze in before the show ends. And okay, we're always overrun, but um, let's see if we can get our old friend, who used to be a troll, but is now actually um, 